Hello, Gareth here. So, we're painting an estuary. Now, this estuary is in Japan, in a place called Kunisaki in Oita Prefecture. And I went here a, a few days ago, and it's a really beautiful place. It's a very backwater place of Japan. So, I've done the basic drawing, and I've got my mop brush and I'm doing a mix of phthalo blue with a touch of um, burnt umber and I'm painting in the distant mountain so I'm not doing anything for the sky because I just want to keep that area really simple and as I come down I make the mix more watery just fade it off at the bottom now I'm using a thin bamboo brush and the same mix as for the mountains and I'm going across here for the, the estuary and I'm trying to leave white gaps so it gives a lovely sparkling effect. Uh, just go all the way down and I've left a lot of whites to suggest sparkle so if you can try to do that and now I've left that to dry and now I'm going to do the uh, banks and I'm using yellow ochre with a touch of phthalo blue in it because I didn't want like a pure color and I'm using a round brush and I'm trying once again to leave lots of little white bits can you see that and that just gives a bit more texture makes it look more realistic like you've got little stones and things that the sunlight is shining off so I, I really like this um, bank because of all the textures that it has so now, yeah, I'm just doing the edge. Don't, don't get too worried about doing it perfectly though. Now I'm making a mix of phthalo blue with a touch of burnt sienna in it or burnt umber. Uh, same mix basically as for the river, but a bit stronger. And I'm doing ripples. So I've probably done too many. And uh, if your line goes the wrong way, if it's not horizontal, then you can quickly wipe it off or just do several more lines that are horizontal and that will hide the mistake. OK, so now I've got some burnt sienna, I think, and um, mixing it with a, the grey, which is basically alizarin crimson and uh, phthalo blue. I'm using a big bamboo brush and I'm just doing dry brush on this uh, shore or bank. So you have to be careful not to overdo it. And where I go uh, off the edge into the river, I just wipe that out with the tissue very quickly. And now I'm using burnt umber, maybe with a slight touch of phthalo blue and alizarin crimson. and. Uh, using a big bamboo brush and trying to get a dry brush effect. So I'm really building up that texture, which I really, really like. This beautiful texture that this shoreline has. Okay, so now I've got what looks like a small bamboo brush. I'm mixing up Phthalo blue, alizarin crimson and some burnt umber and I'm doing the uh, buildings now. So I focus first on just doing the buildings because they're the simplest thing to paint. So after this I'm going to do the, the trees. But first of all just the, uh, the buildings and the rooftops of the buildings. Now I'm mixing phthalo blue and burnt sienna 
and I'm going to do the trees now and I want to get a lovely dry brush effect. Can you see that on the edge? So it really looks like shrubbery, really looks like trees. So that's very important to get that rough edge. And now I'm using the same mix as before for the buildings, the thalo blue, alizarin crimson with a bit of burnt sienna. Now I'm using the same mix but with more burnt umber because I want the base to be darker. And I'm basically doing the uh, wall now. This is a protective wall that they, they often have in Japan. It's one of those distinctive features of Japanese rivers and estuaries, these riverbank walls. And now I'm doing like uh, rocks and I'm adding a lot more than was actually there. But um, I think it looks more interesting with a lot more rocks. So, but look how simple I've made this. And now I'm using utility poles using the same mix. So I first of all start by, and I'm using a liner brush. First of all, I put my brush on the paper and then I do a movement downwards fairly quickly. And then thin lines across for the power lines. And it really is important to get a good liner brush. So do try different kinds. And now I'm using my thin bamboo brush or small one. And using the same mix, I'm doing the rocks. And the rocks are normally going to be three kinds of rocks. Basically triangular shaped rock. Uh, a kind of just a flat line, a rectangular shape or a little dot, a little blob. And those are my three main shapes for rocks. And I tend to do them in clusters or just all on their own. And I find that tends to work well. Okay, and now I'm on to the figure. He's got burnt sienna for a hat. Then I've used the dark mix for that I use for the buildings for his legs and I'm trying to get a dry brush effect there just use your rag a lot to get rid of the excess water on the brush and then here I'm using some kind of light blue maybe turquoise cobalt not cobalt blue I forget what it's called but just a light slightly greeny blue but any blue will do cerulean blue will be fine and then I'm doing the dog and I think I'm using burnt sienna for him. I do the body, then the tail, the legs and then and then the head. The head is the most difficult bit. But keep it all very simple. And then a lead I do with my liner brush. And this is maybe just a uh, shadows and I'm using phthalo blue and alizarin crimson. So it's basically a purple. And then this is a bit of shading using the same purple mix as the shadows. But I didn't even bother doing this for the dog. You don't really need to. And now with a round brush, a thin round brush, I'm picking up brilliant orange. And with that, I'm going to paint the face. I just paint his face and then a little blob for his ear and then his um, hands. And then that's done. So simple. Just always keep it simple. The more simple it is, the more powerful it will be. And now I've got my liner brush. I've got titanium white, which is an opaque watercolour. And I'm just doing the highlights on the figure. So they're on the left hand side. And I'm doing the same thing with the rocks. So... Um, that takes a little bit of time, but it's quite a safe thing now. We've done all the difficult stuff and this is really quite easy and um, there's very little chance of messing anything up now. And I'm doing also a few white highlights in the distance because these little sparkles or twinkles they really make that background look a little bit more exciting. 
the sparkles are, are really an important part of this painting. So this is paint taken directly from the tube. And now I'm even doing this with the river. So although I've got a few white gaps there, I've um, added even more sparkles. And here's the final painting. So please have a go, have some fun. And uh, that's all for now. I'll be back soon. Happy painting. Bye.